differential diagnosis uh, very broadly in terms of interstitial lung disease. Uh, it really relies on a good history of environmental exposures, as well as a history of any features that could be consistent with autoimmune disease. So when talking to patients regarding uh, that may be found to have interstitial lung disease on high res CT or were presenting with symptoms of shortness of breath and found to have interstitial lung disease, um, we'll go through a, a very detailed history all the way from whether they may have any exposure such as coal, whether they have a pet bird at home. And then also, you know, from a rheumatic perspective, uh, we, we evaluate for other uh, signs or symptoms of autoimmune disease to see if there may be an underlying autoimmune disease that uh, may be associated with the interstitial lung disease. So as a rheumatologist, I'm often asking people about whether they have color changes in their fingers in the cold that can be associated with something called Raynaud's phenomenon whether they have a lot of stiffness in the joints in the morning and uh, kind of the small joints of the hands that could be associated with uh, inflammatory arthritis. And then also just, you know, reviewing other skin features such as rashes or skin thickening um, and other systems that could be involved in an autoimmune disease that could be driving the interstitial lung disease. Diagnostic tools that we would use uh, to uh, really evaluate for interstitial lung disease. Uh, high resolution CT is certainly, um, would really give us the uh, fullest evaluation of what the interstitial lung disease looks like. Um, sometimes we can see it on chest x-ray. Uh, high res resolution CT is gonna be more sensitive. Um, Pulmonary function testing is, is critical for the evaluation of interstitial lung disease because this is really telling us whether there's been any uh, reduction in the actual lung function um, in the presence of interstitial lung disease. So we look at parameters called forced vital capacity, which would often be reduced if the interstitial lung disease is really clinically re relevant. Um, and we'll also look at uh, diffusing capacity for carbon monoxide on the PFTs as well too, which can also be reduced in the setting of interstitial lung disease. These have to be taken in context of um, other things that are going on with the patient. Uh, so for example, if they have um, underlying pulmonary hypertension, which can be seen, we can also see a reduction in the, the diffusing capacity for carbon monoxide. So it is, it's a complex evaluation and we do use um, one clinical examination, um, patient history too of dyspnea, although some patients can uh, not be incredibly symptomatic, but we can still see interstitial lung disease. So the, the high resolution CT and pulmonary function testing is really the key features that we use in, in terms of examination and uh, imaging parameters and procedures that we'll use to really define that level of interstitial lung disease and how it's affecting the patient.